I had my right side done about five years ago. I'm much less reactive after the procedure and I did a lot of psychiatric work with a really good psychologist. I used to have a feeling of cold hand holding my heart for years. And I got better after the right side. I'm starting to feel some of that now. I've had stress tests to make sure it wasn't anything other than something else. But no, the cardiologist said, the coronaries are open, everything's fine. Yeah, the generalized anxiety I do have, my sleep is not as good as it should be. There are times where I get annoyed when I just shouldn't get annoyed. I like to always be even keel and calm and not triggered, but I'm starting to get more triggered. Trauma to me is basically, it's universal. It doesn't really matter what caused it. It depends on the extent of trauma to the individual. It also depends on the genetics. My grandfather was part of pogroms, he survived those. So that changed his DNA, that's called epigenetic change. Then that gave it to my father, who had horrible trauma during World War II, and then he gave PTSD to my mother, who eventually killed herself. And I'm gonna be getting my block, so there you go. It's a gift that, it's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> when people say mental trauma, it means basically what it means in our society is you can snap out of it. Try to snap out of a broken leg. Broken leg is an injury. So is PTSD. That's why Frank Hogberg, one of the most famous psychiatrists in the world, calls it post-traumatic stress injury, meaning you can actually diagnose it using advanced scans and you can treat it as an injury. What Mental is trauma is actually a physiological change. When somebody does something horrible to you and then you can get out of bed because you're so mobilized by fear, that's not a character flaw, it's a physiological response. When somebody sees something horrible and the heart rate goes up, is that a character flow if the heart rate goes up? No, just physiological response, there's no difference. And now there's something to treat it. Correct, that's the whole thing. You can calm the sympathetic system, get it to the baseline, I think a lot more people will feel so much better. I've been asked many times, why do people have not heard about it? Well, not for the lack of trying. I have given testimony from Congress, I was in Fox News National, I've been a number of places, other physicians have reported on it. What one of my professor friends said, you have a credulity problem. It's hard to believe something that simple could have such an effect. So when I talk to doctors, I go, I don't, I just don't believe. Well, here's the papers, here's the information. I don't believe it. I don't think it's, it could be that simple. It's combining, it's weird. You're combining anesthesia and psychiatry. That's really, has not really been done particularly. And frankly, I'm looking forward to just being another patient and having the relief of, you know, improve my sleep getting rid of some of the memories I'm sure are lurking in there somewhere and being more relaxed. I think it would be a marvelous thing to feel my body relax. You know, it, it's been through a lot. I'm very fortunate to have the right people around me because I physiologically cannot, if I listen to everybody's stories of everything, I don't think I'd be able to do it. Nervous at all? Not really. My blood pressure is up, so I guess I am. <laughs> It's my greatest honor to treat the physician that kind of wrote all the papers on this and was the kind of seminal researcher and uh, proponent of this. Once I walk into the OR, it's usually less than 10 minutes. Get this done, yeah. 10 minutes to yeah. change people's lives. Yes, yes, indeed. After the procedure, we're looking for something called a Horner syndrome. A droopiness of the eye, your pupil can be constricted. The eye can become a little red, a stuffy nose, and that's all because the sympathetics are blocked. You can be a little hoarse, you can have a little difficulty swallowing. Those are just local anesthetic effects that are temporary. Having done many, many of these cases, it's uh, my, my greatest pleasure to be able to treat him and uh, see if we can help him out in his personal personal trauma journey. You're driving. Okay, that's why I'm <laughs> shutting the hell up. I'll just sit around. I'm not going to Okay, no. wonderful. Let's get one more time. You know, I'm 100% trust you. I love it. Love it. All righty. I'll see you yes, later. Yes, I will see you later, okay? You. Here we go. A little numbing here, okay? This is a little numbing. One, two, three, poke. Here. 
are in a good place here. Gee, one more little pinch here, okay? One more little pinch. One, two, three, poke. Great placement here. And we're going to inject a little anesthetic. That went really well, okay? Five minutes. Yeah. Do so well, okay? Take your time, right? How long has it been now since the blocks? 30 minutes? Yeah. It's quick. The voice is interesting, but you know, I think I feel good. Still for some tightness in the neck, but overall, feels calm. The ice is out of the heart. Doesn't feel like anything. Nothing squeezing out. I feel really good. I think everybody is different. I kind of felt like crying last time, but I feel like that now. I'm not sure how I can describe it better. I just feel focused. Like I'm ready to go do all. Everything I want to be doing, it's like, whoosh. If anything, it makes me want to work harder to have it available for others. It's such a simple thing. They can make your life so much better. I mean, just, that's maddening to me that I'm still here. And still, we're still arguing about this. Come in, do the procedure, and you go do some therapy, and then <laughs> you back to life. It's not that complicated, and it's doable. It's not highfalutin nanotech. <laughs> Just a needle and a local.